Davis. In this video, I take a closer look at a potentially devastating weapon for the Lakers, the LeBron James and Anthony Davis pick and roll. Drop coverage is when the defensive guard fights over the top of a ball screen and the defensive big hangs back in the paint. This is one of the most common pick and roll coverages in the NBA and the intent is to protect the rim against the drive to the paint while clogging the roll lane for the screen setter. You can beat this in a couple of ways. First is the pocket pass. There's a window in between the two defenders and Anthony Davis does a great job of getting to that space and giving his guard a passing angle. He also has great hands and catches nearly everything, even in close quarters. Here's an example of how he'll linger in that passing window as long as he can. A lot of bigs overrun this. LeBron's been delivering these pocket passes with precision for years. Davis adds an additional passing window by being a vertical threat. We see the pocket pass possibility here, but as he continues to roll, it's the weak side of Wing's responsibility to rotate over and tag him, meaning to get in his way. But if he doesn't get his body all the way in front of him, AD can catch the lob. Davis has a 9 foot standing reach and reportedly a 35 inch vertical, so his elevator gets off on an entirely different floor than the guys were trying to help. When you combine that with his ability to catch nearly everything and finish with either hand, teams have to either fully commit to helping when he rolls or it's going to be a bucket. This is another pass that LeBron's been making for years. LeBron had a similar threat last season with JaVale McGee, but Davis's hands are significantly better. JaVale usually has to finish these with two hands or not at all. The other scoring opportunity is on putbacks. If the ball handler attacks the hedging big, the screener should still roll to the basket, where he has offensive rebounding opportunities against smaller players trying to hold him off. Few players in NBA history have ever put more pressure on the rim out of pick and rolls than LeBron does, so there should be plenty of opportunities for AD. With the defensive big hanging back in the paint, another way the screen setter can be to drop coverage is by popping out for the jumper. AD is pretty good on most other catch and shoot threes, but he's surprisingly poor here. You'll see on a lot of these shots that he's still getting his feet into position after he catches the ball, which could explain some of his struggles here. If he can clean this up, and it's a fairly easy fix, there would be nearly no weaknesses in the LeBron AD pick and roll combination. You beat ice coverages in a similar way. Ice is when the defensive guard doesn't let you go middle on a side pick and roll forcing your baseline. That's what Donovan Mitchell does here. Watch how AD backs up into the open space while staying in the passing window, allowing him to yam this on Gobert's head. All of the same principles that allow AD to beat drop coverages allow him to beat ice coverages, along with his need to improve on those pick and pops. If they don't ice the side pick and roll, it's almost an automatic dunk because the help defender has to come from the other side of the court to meet AD at the rim, and that's not going to happen very often. He doesn't roll all the way to the basket, but he stops to receive the pass out of the trap, and now you have a 4 on 3 scenario. AD is also a threat as a scorer in these situations, but this is also where I'm most impressed with him as a passer. The Pelicans didn't really have a perimeter player that defenses would trap on a regular basis, but when they did, AD did an excellent job of making short roll reads.
teams defending the Pelicans would often shock the ball screen instead of blitzing, meaning that the defensive big hedges at the level of the ball screen. He doesn't trap, but he does meet the ball handler much higher than you would in a drop coverage. AD was really good at getting behind the defense in these situations, either by rolling hard after the screen or slipping the screen altogether and getting to the rim before the help defender can rotate. This will work when teams try to trap LeBron as well, making it a much more difficult decision for the defense. There are a few other things that you can do to beat switches, but for the most part, NBA teams look for the best mismatch. LeBron was surprisingly mediocre on these last season, particularly when a big was switched onto him. He'd often settle for a step back three going to his left rather than using his foot speed advantage to attack. Anthony Davis gives the Lakers another option on the other end of these switches. While you're not going to guard LeBron with a small player, it's going to be a smaller player than who's defending AD, and Davis eats smaller wings alive. He goes over the top of these guys with his length and skill, or seals them on his hip. If LeBron doesn't like the mismatch that he has on his end, he can always give it up to AD and Davis is going to go to work. There will be some situations where you can reverse the roles and put AD as the ball handler in these ball screens, particularly when it puts AD in a position to score rather than having to make passing reads. So to put all of this in simple English, teams are going to have to send a lot of extra attention towards the LeBron and AD pick and roll if they want to stop it. That makes it very simple for everyone else. They're either going to have to hit open shots, swing the ball to the open man, or attack closeouts. If the Lakers can build the roster with guys on the team who can do that, they're going to score a lot of points. The Laker Film Room is dedicated to helping you experience the Lakers and the game of basketball on a deeper level. If you'd like to support the work that we do and get early access to these videos, you can do so by donating via the Patreon link below. Alright, that'll do it for this one. I'll catch you guys.